Six months ago, OpenAI changed the world forever when they released ChatGPT to the public. In just five days, ChatGPT hit a million users. It took Facebook 10 months and Twitter two years to hit that number. And less than two months later, ChatGPT hit 100 million users. That's six times faster than TikTok, 15 times faster than Instagram, and over 25 times faster than Spotify. But ChatGPT didn't just take the world by storm. It took all of Silicon Valley hostage. Here's what I mean. In late January, Microsoft invested $10 billion into OpenAI, bringing their total stake in the company up to 49% and gaining exclusive rights to OpenAI's codebase in the process. By early February, Microsoft announced a new version of Bing, powered by the same large language models behind ChatGPT, then GPT 3.5, and now GPT 4. These announcements made Microsoft stock shoot up by around 6%, which may not sound like much, but Microsoft is worth around $2 trillion, so we're talking about well over $100 billion in value here. That's because this is a huge change in how we search the entire internet, from keywords to natural language, and how we get our answers, from a ranked list of websites and advertisements to a single direct and personalized result. But Google is the current king of search, and their search business brings in around $150 billion a year in ad revenue. So when this happened, Google found themselves in big trouble. Today was a day where we brought some more competition to search. We've been at it. But believe me, I've been at it for 20 years, and I've been waiting <laughs> for it. Uh, but look, at the end of the day, let's not, you know, we, they're the 800-pound gorilla on this, which is uh, what they are. And I hope that with our innovation, um, they will definitely want to come out and show that they can dance. And I want people to know that we made them dance. And I think that'll be a great day. Yikes. And to add salt to Google's wounds, ChatGPT only even exists because of a paper that Google researchers published back in 2017 about the transformer, the T, in ChatGPT. Google's CEO, Sundar Pichai, declared a code red for the entire company, even going as far as bringing back Google's founders, Larry Page and Sergey Brin, to help chart a new course for the company. By early February, Google announced BARD, their answer to ChatGPT. They showed how BARD could take nuanced questions like this one. What new discoveries from the James Webb Space Telescope can I tell my nine-year-old about? BARD instantly went viral, but not for the reasons that Google was hoping for. See, Google showed BARD saying that the James Webb Telescope took the first pictures of planets outside our solar system, when in fact, different observatories around the world have been finding exoplanets for nearly two decades. Just hours after this ad for BARD came out, Google held a live event in Paris, where they touted BARD and generative AI as the future of the company. But that event felt just as rushed as BARD itself. Let's see how that works with a live demo. We are missing the, we're missing the phone. <laughs> we have no, okay, we're gonna move on. We can't find the phone. Yikes. Over the next couple of days, Google stock lost over $150 billion in value. And a Bloomberg report would later show that Google employees begged the company not to release BARD in its current state, finding that it would often return potentially harmful, if not downright dangerous advice. BARD is worse than useless. Please do not launch. But after BARD failed its internal risk evaluation, Google's lead for AI governance overturned the results, and BARD was launched anyway, with Google simply labeling it as an experiment, a label it still has today. And Google is hard at work right now, weaving their large language models into all of their services, from Gmail and Google Maps to Google Workspace and even into their healthcare products, in an effort not to fall behind. According to Bloomberg, ethics reviews for Google's AI products and features are still almost entirely voluntary to this day. Except for research papers, since, you know, the whole OpenAI and Transformers thing. And speaking of OpenAI, here's what their CEO, Sam Altman, had to say in his most recent congressional testimony on this very topic. But as this technology advances, we understand that people are anxious about how it could change the way we live. My worst fears are that we cause significant, we, the field, the technology, the industry, cause significant harm to the world. Uh, I think if this technology goes wrong, it can go quite wrong. Uh, and we want to be vocal about that. We want to work with the government to prevent that from happening. Yikes. But what if Silicon Valley has it all wrong? Should we really be trusting Congress to create regulations for AI? Should companies like Google and Microsoft and OpenAI keep hiring AI ethics experts only to ignore them? Maybe AI doesn't need much oversight at all, at least not from humans. 
Anthropic was founded in 2021 by Dario Amade, his sister Daniela, and a number of researchers from OpenAI, including Tom Brown, who is the lead engineer for GPT-3. Anthropic's goal is to create large-scale AI systems that are reliable, interpretable, and steerable. So basically to make enterprise AI tools that people can actually count on and understand how they work. Before founding Anthropic, Dario was the director of safety for AI systems at OpenAI, and then a VP of research there. He left because he disagreed with OpenAI's increasingly commercial focus, especially after Microsoft's first investment in them in 2019. Think about all of the issues with ChatGPT and Google Bard today. The inconsistent answers when given the same prompts, the hallucinations, the ability to jailbreak the models to extract harmful information and behaviors, and that's just the start. All of these things make it pretty hard for businesses to rely on these tools for commercial applications. And those are the exact kinds of issues that Anthropic is focused on solving with their AI chat assistant, Claude, which launched back in March. Claude is designed for applications like customer service, legal, coaching, back office management, sales, and search, tasks that actually help businesses make more money with fewer resources. One special thing about Claude is that it skips human feedback altogether. Instead, it's a constitutional AI, meaning that Claude governs itself based on a set of rules and guardrails that can't be changed from the outside. I'll show you exactly where and how this could give Claude a huge advantage over ChatGPT and Google Bard in a little bit. But first, let me show you the massive scale that Claude already operates at, because even if you've never heard of it, you've probably already used it. Zoom invested in Anthropic and is using their AI across their entire platform, from meeting and call transcriptions and action items, to team chats, meeting whiteboards, and Zoom IQ. Zoom also plans to integrate Anthropic's AI into their enterprise tools like Contact Center, Virtual Agent, and Workforce Management. Zoom's platform averages 300 million daily active users. Daily. The social Q&A website Quora recently launched a service called Poe, where users can ask different large language models questions. Two of the most used models on Poe are Anthropic's Claude Plus and Claude Instant, which is Anthropic's faster, cheaper, and more lightweight model. When a Poe user generates an exceptionally useful or high-quality answer, it may end up back on Quora's main site, which has over 400 million users per month. And if you've never used Notion, you really need to. If every Microsoft Office tool got together and had a baby, it would be Notion. Yeah, maybe don't think about that one too hard. Notion is an incredibly powerful productivity tool that helps over 30 million people manage their tasks, notes, data, and collaborate with others. I used it to help run my business and this very channel. Anthropic powers Notion AI, which is a massive game changer because it lets people organize things even better, generate first drafts in an instant, and even automate huge chunks of their entire workflows. Notion is worth over $10 billion today, and I hope that I can one day invest in the company, because I know dozens of people that literally cannot run their business without it. Speaking of which, Anthropic has a pretty incredible list of investors too including Google, which invested $300 million for a 10% stake in the company. And they've raised over a billion dollars from companies like Zoom and Salesforce, as well as venture capital firms like Spark Ventures. Even after all that, Anthropic is only valued at $4.6 billion today, or about one-sixth of OpenAI. But Anthropic is still a private company, so you can't just go buy their shares on the stock market. And that's where Disraptor comes in. Disraptor is a private equity investing app that makes investing in pre-IPO companies easy and affordable. The analysts at Disraptor handpick only the best companies and make sure that you know exactly what the company does, its market opportunities, and of course, helps you understand the risks. For example, people who invested in Palantir back when it was private saw a 133% net profit from that deal. So these guys really know their stuff when it comes to AI companies. That's because Disraptor focuses on technologies that have already become market leaders, which means you can get a piece of the most exciting private companies like Discord, SpaceX, and of course, Anthropic. Right now, accredited investors can use the Disraptor app to invest in Anthropic for as little as $5,000. And like I said, Anthropic is only valued at $4.6 billion today, which is just around one-sixth of OpenAI. But this round closes on June 5th, so make sure to use my link in the description below today. All right, so far we've talked about how ChatGPT forced Google and many other companies to rush their own generative AI technologies. We've also covered some of the big issues around ChatGPT and Google Bard, like hallucinations and jailbreaking, and how that makes it pretty hard for businesses to adopt these technologies at scale. 
So now let me show you why Anthropic might have a huge advantage in solving these same problems. Let's start with how these models learn. Today, ChatGPT improves via reinforcement learning from human feedback, or RLHF. At a high level, humans prompt GPT-4 via ChatGPT, and then give the model feedback via the thumbs up or thumbs down buttons that are attached to every reply. That tells the model how it should tune its future outputs. Claude skips human feedback altogether. Instead, Claude is a constitutional AI, meaning it governs itself based on a set of rules and guardrails that can't be changed from the outside. This constitution focuses on the three H's, making Claude more helpful, honest, and harmless. Just to be clear, this isn't some ethics jargon to appeal to businesses that may not trust ChatGPT. This constitution is based on a wide range of relevant sources, like the UN Declaration of Human Rights, Apple's rules around data privacy, and even the AI values identified by labs like Google DeepMind. It's pretty crazy how Google's research ended up inspiring this entire wave of generative AI, but they didn't end up leading it. Anyway, I read Anthropic's paper on Claude to understand what this could actually mean for big business applications. After all, that's where all the money is. Anthropic enforces this constitution by using a technique called chain of thought reasoning, which has become a very reliable way to boost the performance of large language models without having to retrain them entirely. Chain of thought reasoning is where you tell the model to solve a prompt step by step, and then internally ask follow-up questions to further refine the output. By the way, you can try this technique in your favorite chatbot right now by starting your prompts with let's think step by step. You'll notice a big difference in the output and that alone makes the whole process much more transparent. Then Anthropic randomly draws from a pool of follow-up questions that are derived from this constitution. For example, identify specific ways in which your last response is harmful, unethical, illegal, and so on. Now go rewrite your response to remove those elements. At a high level, this is how they've cut humans out of the main feedback loop. Anthropic argues that this is the best approach for a few important reasons. Humans can be biased, which introduces bias into the feedback for the model. For example, we saw that with how woke ChatGPT's political responses appeared to be when it first came out. Humans are also less consistent and less reliable. Our preferences change with things like our mood, our environment, and whether or not somebody else is with us. And at a more basic level, humans are just slower and more expensive workers than AI agents. Not to mention that most ChatGPT users probably don't give it feedback at all. This means that human feedback scales very poorly as models get used more and more. And speaking of scaling, according to this paper, early results show that Cloud's architecture scores closer and closer to the models that rely on human feedback as you increase its parameter count. Current trends suggest that constitutional models larger than 52 billion parameters will be competitive with those trained by human feedback. So knowing that, Anthropic plans to spend around a billion dollars over the next 18 months to develop a new model called Claude Next. Claude Next aims to be 10 times more powerful than existing large language models and push the frontier of what's possible in terms of economic activity and automation. By the way, Claude's current context window is already about 70,000 words, which is almost the length of an average novel. And that's about twice as big as GPT-4s. If Claude Next can 10x that, it could do things like analyze every stock in an index fund, or understand every book or episode in an entire series. A lot of new and exciting capabilities get unlocked as these models can remember more and do more with that information. The global generative AI market is set to more than 10x in size over the next 10 years, which is over a 30% compound annual growth rate. And studies by Gartner suggest that we'll see an explosion of new tools and capabilities for decision making, automation, and even smart products to help people be more productive and create things that we can't even imagine over the short and medium term. And to me, that's a future worth investing in. Speaking of which, don't forget that accredited investors can invest in Anthropic right now thanks to Disraptor. But that offer closes on June 5th, so make sure to use my link in the description below before then. And if you feel I've earned it, consider hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel. That lets me know to put out more research like this. Either way, thanks for watching, and until next time, this is Ticker Symbol U. My name is Alex, reminding you that the best investment you can make is in you.